Hello and welcome to the second part of our briefing for Module 3. This is Chapter 4 of Services Marketing. This is about customer perception, but not just customer perception of service, customer satisfaction, service quality, and then also analyzing service encounters. These are the building blocks. Remember that uh, service is perishable. Service cannot be inventoried. It, it can happen in real time. Uh, so it's good to be able to analyze the actual encounter that a firm has uh, with a customer uh, as the service is being delivered. So let's take a look at this. The customer. Well, who is the customer? It's anyone who receives the company services. It could be internal or external customers. And inside a company, uh, different functions provide services to other functions or groups. Or if you're running a project, uh, functional departments may provide services to your project. Let's look at the elements of service quality and perceptions. Uh, service quality is related to reliability, responsiveness, assurance, empathy, and tangibles. Uh, where do these come from? This is known as the ServQual model. It's uh, recognized that uh, service quality is multidimensional. So these are dimensions that are, uh, research has shown uh, are important to customer perception of service quality. Now, service quality is also a factor associated with customer satisfaction, and then that leads to customer loyalty. So if your service quality is good, and uh, the situational factors and personal factors uh, contribute to good perceptions of service quality, then you have su customer satisfaction, then you have customer loyalty. Remember in service to the bottom and the bottom line, when your customers are loyal, you spend less money acquiring customers, and it increases your margins. So what influences customer satisfaction, the quality, the price, it could be emotions, equity of fairness, or fairness, for example, if someone's getting much better service than you are and you both paid the same, for example, even though the service you receive might be good, it could be uh, individual factors. So the important thing to keep in mind is multidimensional. There's a lot of moving parts uh, to satisfying customers. Now, on the other hand, a good service does uh, lead to customer satisfaction, and customer satisfaction uh, leads to revenues. Here's the uh, customer service index. Uh, top 25% of uh, customer service index firms and uh, bottom 25% and market value added. Okay, so um, what's being illustrated here is that the better you satisfy your customers, the better impact to the bottom line, the better uh, value your company adds, and the more you're compensated for that. So what happens when customers are satisfied? Customers return. If they return, then that's, uh, that's money in your pocket in terms of improved margins, reduces the cost of trying to get new customers. Of course, it's always nice to have new customers, but it's even better if you have returning customers. They're loyal, so you get repeat business, and also they spread the word to others. That increases your revenues, and it also can reduce your cost as well. Here's an example of customer satisfaction and loyalty uh, between um, and, and loyalty in competitive industries. Notice that the higher the satisfaction, the higher the loyalty. Uh, so you have to hang on to that customer. And uh, you see a lot of companies these days doing things to try to lock in customers, to keep to uh, get them happy and keep them happy and get them familiar with their service. This is one reason why Apple has iTunes, uh, Android has Google Play. Uh, you want to create an environment where they're very satisfied, they're familiar with the service, and they keep using it. Now, top box scores uh, refers to ticking very satisfied in terms of unsatisfied, but notice the uh, the the point drop between very satisfied and somewhat satisfied. 44% uh, point drop in repurchasing and 55% point drop in recommending. So this suggests if you can get customers from the second uh, box up to the top box, you're going to get customers that will buy again from you and they will recommend you. Okay, so uh, service quality is related to the customer gap, the gap between expected service and perceived service. 
Okay, it's the customer's judgment of overall excellence of the service. And if there's a if the perception does not match what's expected, uh, then there's the gap. Okay, the customer's judgment of the service provided in relation to the quality that was expected. And how does the customer make such judgments? Looks at outcomes. Uh, what was the final outcome? How enjoyable was the interaction? What about the physical environment associated with delivering of the service? Now we come again to the uh, ServQual five dimensions. Reliability, assurance, tangibles, empathy, and responsiveness. Uh, service is intangible, but the degree to which you make it tangible makes it more real and impactful to the customer. So let's uh, look at these dim dimensions and how different companies uh, use these dimensions in their service. The Geek Squad, for example, focuses on responsiveness and service positioning. Notice 24-hour computer support task force. Okay. How customers judge five dimensions of service quality. I'll let you read this because there's a lot of detail here, but it shows by industry car repair, airline, medical care, architecture, and then the uh, five attributes, five serve qual attributes. You can see how customers uh, perceive each one according to the industry. Okay, and you can also read further the details of ServQual attributes, but I encourage you to think in your own firms what services are offered um, or new services you may be considering and how you may uh, you know, rate the quality of the deliverables based on, me, on these five attributes. The service encounter is when it gets real. That's the moment of truth. That's when the firm's the customer's interaction interacting with the firm. And it's critical, you know, that you have that moment in time where you're dealing with a customer and either it works out great or it doesn't. Uh, so at that point, it's your chance to build and reinforce uh, the quality of the service and your chance to build a repeat customer. Here's an example of a service counter cascade. This is a term you'll be exposed to in chapter four. Uh, it's some, it's maybe a special form of a flow chart. You don't see decision points in it, but just shows a sequence of events. You check in, a bell person takes customer to room. There's a restaurant meal, a wake up call, a checkout. This shows it, uh, different snapshots sequenced in time of what, uh, uh, someone at a hotel would it be experiencing. Uh, industrial purchase, a sales call, you've got delivery, servicing, ordering supplies, billing. And each one of those is a touch point with the customer and the ability to make a difference to build that loyalty and, and have a repeat customer. Uh, you can build satisfaction and quality each time you encounter your customer. Uh, so think of this, even if you're a product company, you do have to sell the product, you have to deliver it, you have to maintain it, service it. Each of those are opportunities to express service and in a quality way. So you have that uh, repeat business and that loyalty. What items or what elements are being uh, in involved in service research? Uh, these days, uh, recovery. What happens when the system fails? This is when some companies can really shine. Everyone knows that sometimes things go wrong. Um, we expect that, but what we really like to see is an out, you know an outstanding recovery, adaptability. Uh, what if uh, something out of the ordinary happens? What do employees do to address that? Uh, coping with uh, problems from customers, uh, spontaneity, um, employees rising to the occasion to serve the customer, all important factors that can make or break the service experience for the customer. Uh, reco recovery, acknowledge the problem, don't try and spin it to the customer, explain what happened, compensate, put out the options, take the responsibility, never blame it on someone else. Uh, adaptability, recognize that what the customer is asking for is serious and try to think ahead and see what's coming. Uh, you may have to adjust the system, you know, don't embarrass or laugh at the customer. Uh, spontaneity, uh, do take time, uh, be attentive, anticipate needs, listen, coping, notice there's a lot of listening here, uh, don't take customers dissatisfaction personally, if a customer's yelling at you, uh, you know, don't take it personally, uh, don't let customer dissatisfaction affect others, 
technology-based service encounters. Uh, technology solved an intensified need. Technology was better than the alternative. Technology did the job. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, in today's uh, world, when we have so much advanced technology, um, we often interact with technologies when we experience uh, service. Uh, for example, how many times have you called your cable company or your bank and you really wanted to talk to a human, but instead you get a computer? Uh, so most of my um, interaction with technology and service it doesn't go all that well. Uh, it has that voice recognition and it says choose one through five and I keep saying operator, operator, because I want to talk to a human. So these are some of the main themes of chapter four. It's all about the uh, multidimensional aspects of service quality and how important it is that you understand the cascading sequence of events in a service encounter, your opportunity to offer quality at each uh, step of the cascade, uh, to understand what attributes um, are associated with service quality, and also what to do if something goes wrong, uh, rules of thumb, how you could take a bad situation and turn it around and make it a positive. Uh, what's the benefit of doing that? Repeat customers, word of mouth, additional customers. And there's a lot of value to doing that. And as the service is unfolding in real time, you blow it, you may not have an, another chance. You almost could think of every interaction or every touch point with a customer, a net present value of all of that customer's future spending and all of the new customers you get through word of mouth, that future spending. To blow off a customer with a poor service experience, you're getting rid of uh, a you know a net present value of potentially a lot of bottom line to your company so it's something that can't be ignored so this was part two of a briefing on our readings for this week I will see you in the module three discussion threads